Masters on the range coverage here during the third round of the Masters continues. Matt Kuchar beginning his warm up session. Patrick Reed, our leader here at nine under par, will be heading to the first tee a little later this afternoon. Kuchar playing very well so far this week. Sixty-eight in the opening round, and a couple stumbles yesterday led to a seventy-five. But he's at one under par. Yeah, he had it three under par through eleven for the tournament yesterday. Did good. And Mark, I loved what you talked about a couple days ago about Matt Kuchar there working with his coach Chris O'Connell and what motion he makes that he, this left move that's so prominent in his one plane swing through the ball is the purpose of it is to eliminate the left side of the course. Well, just confirming the sensation there with Chris O'Connell. You can see where Matt's talking about getting the handle in front of his side where when he goes poorly, Watch for that yellow grip cap right on the top of the handle. It's a nice visual because when Matty goes bad, that grip cap drops down to his side too much, and then he cannot swing left because if he does, he'll miss strike golf shots. So a lot of what Matt Kuchar is doing, and that's what I believe he and uh, Chris are talking about right now, is swing left certainly. And you can see there's the illustration from Chris saying, well, if that thing gets behind you coming down, it's going to be very hard to get it back in front of you and left through contact. So watch now over the next few swings, if we can get a little close up, how Matt in transition, part body rotation, part pressure on the handle, part arm swing, trying to get that grip back in front of his chest. So then he can force the path a little more left, or in other words, a little less right. Good look at the swing of Matt Kuchar. And for a little more Kuchar insight, Let's bring in Amanda Balionis. Yeah, Matt Kuchar, we were actually uh, talking about it on the broadcast yesterday. He has some one-of-a-kind hand-painted head covers on his golf bag this week, specifically for the Masters. So I was talking to his caddy, John Wood, about them, asked, them, uh, asked him any details he had. He said, absolutely. He said, oh, for the driver, it's hand-painted the 13th hole, Azalea. It's pretty unbelievable. It took weeks, apparently, to hand-paint each one of these head covers for his three wood it's the 12th hole golden bell and then on hybrids uh it's the 10th hole and the 16th hole here at augusta national so pretty nice and i know that you guys are wondering what kind of music john rom uh, listens to as he warms up on the putting green i just asked him and he said i've asked this all the time it's a very popular question it is always rap and it's mainly kendrick lamar i respect that guys <laughs> little eminem too great insight from amanda kendrick lamar Popular choice in the rap category and beautiful head covers hand painted for Matt Kuchar as beautiful as that swing. I've never heard of hand painted head covers. Of course, Tiger's mom used to hand knit all of Tiger's head covers. Great look there at the footwork of Matt Kuchar. And it was always a tradition that Tiger's mom would hand knit Tiger a brand new head cover for the Masters every year. Follow up on Mark Immelman's point earlier about what Matt and Chris O'Connell are working on. All good teachers have that ability to know where their students are at impact. In other words, they isolate those variables of impact. Where's their path? Where's their face? Is there too much manipulation going on at the bottom there? They're constantly analyzing what is their impact and now what does the player need to feel in order to improve that impact? So if the path is too inside out and the player has to feel more out to in and more left through the ball to square the path. Yeah, he has no, we talked image. about uh, Phil Mickelson lifting and raising that club up. You see, uh, Kuchar doing the same routine just to 
start his backswing. But what I love as you watch him now through contact, he sits nice and shallow. Bobby used that term and shallow for the folks who aren't into all the golf jargon of this. It just means that the club's not digging down into the ground too much. It's sweeping the turf. Another thing to bear in mind here with Cooch, it's a lot about feels. And as he drags the club away, you can see the hand, the head raise up. He sort of pulls the handle in behind him a little bit, then it travels upward. And then from there, he will always, almost, almost, and I say that uh, very strongly, try and loop over where he went back. This view right now is absolutely perfect. Now, if we can stop him talking and have him do one so we can <laughs> see this, that would be awesome. <laughs> Not cooperating. So watch the there handle now at address. The head will raise up, but that handle will travel in and almost towards his right thigh. Which is his style of one plane swing. It's very Hogan-esque, honestly, if you watch it. Now, he'll raise the head up. That handle will drag in a little, and then it'll go over where it went back. So all you folks in the grill room saying, well, I mustn't come over the top of my shots. He has one of the best strikers in the world who does that, but he's doing that to Bobby's point because his error actually goes too far inside out, and that's when he starts to hit hook shots. Matt's <laughs> Matt's very tranquil. You'll never see Matt wearing headphones, will you? No, he's very tranquil comportment and his easy demeanor belies a seriously fast wit. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Bubba. Can you hear me? Can so you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> One of the things Matt will do, too, in raising the club above the ground is he'll do that and ex exaggerate it a little bit if he's purposely trying to take a shallower divot. That is, he's purposely trying to hit the ball a little lower on the club face like that. And when you get out here with wet conditions, the one thing you don't want to do is catch any ground before the ball. And that's where that dreaded squirter comes from. So, the so, given, that, so, so given that, would you advocate that move then to the club golfers watching this? Uh, potentially, depends what their impact is. But in wet conditions, you capture, especially with the short irons, you get more backspin when you strike the ball lower on the club face. And with the wet conditions, that takes the backspin away. So you you purposely will want to hit the ball slightly lower in the club face with your short irons in wet conditions. So the unique swing and very effective swing of Matt Kuchar.